Hi, it's Captain Mike here with you again. Uh, in this video, I am going to show you how I have taken uh, one of my experiments with natural river clay that I find locally full circle. Well, almost full circle. I may never get completely around the circle, but I'm getting close. So, with that said, uh, y'all hang in there and I'm going to show you where we started and where we are. Once upon a time, there was a uh, chunk of clay sitting by itself down on the river, not bothering anybody, and some old guy with nothing better to do came by and picked it up, and along with a whole bunch of it, the rest of his family, I mean, I wiped out the whole family, tried to anyway, and uh, brought it to, my sh to his shop, my shop, and um, ground it up, busted it up into pieces, added some water to it, and turned it into a slurry, better known as slip. And from that slip was cast a bowl. Doesn't take long for this stuff to set up, but you're gonna have to have a mold. Once the uh, slip is set up, it turned into a greenware bowl. And then the greenware was fired to cone 04 in electric kiln, and it turned into a nice terracotta looking bowl. So I was happy with that. Uh, I tried putting clear, uh, dunking clear glaze on it, worked fine, turned it uh, a pretty uh, darker red color. Uh, then I decided I wanted to continue this um, journey on what could I do with local products that cost nothing, were at hand, and I could color uh, some of this red clay. So what I did was a alternate method of pit firing. Now I did not pit fire the greenware, as I mentioned just a while ago, I fired it in an electric kiln. Makes it a lot easier to do the smoke firing. I took the bisque fired, 04 fired clay pot and I wrapped some of them in tin foil along with all kinds of dried vegetation and stuff like that and stuck them in a 55 gallon drum and fired them in that 55 gallon drum overnight. And got these pretty successful patterns. They're not the best smoke uh, clouds that you've ever seen, but it's neat. The darker one come from where the, the tin foil was tighter, there was less air, and so there was no oxidization and it causes the black. And I said, well, that's pretty good too. There was some warpage, no breakage, but some warpage. And uh, I said, you know, this is pretty good, uh, but what else can I do? So I was visiting, uh, a potter in Athens, Georgia, down at Good Dirt, and he happened to mention had I tried um, ash glaze, and I said, well, no, I'm familiar with it, but I never tried it. So, I looked it up, and here's what you do. You get yourself some ashes. These just happen to be white oak ashes, where I started a little fire. You'll need much more than this. But you get you a pan full of ashes. You can use any kind of wood. It doesn't matter. I happen to have lots of everything. And uh, with ash, you're going to need some water and a little bit of the clay I just mentioned. And of course, you want it as fine as you can get it. So break it up, blend it up in your blender, sift it in as fine a sieve as you've got, preferably 50 or better and get just as fine a powder 
clay as you can get. Now, it doesn't matter if it's wet. Everybody says use dry clay, and that's fine. It's better for measuring. But what I do is that I take the ash, I take the powdered clay, and or the wet clay. That well, it'll 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 have to be sifted up if it's powdered. So hey, that's that's I'm getting redundant here. So you take your clay, and um, you'll mix it with the water. And, and the powder. And you can start off at 50-50. 50% clay, 50% ashes. Make a slurry about the consistency of a slip that you would normally pour like I poured into this bowl. And uh, once you've got that done, you dip. You can brush it on if you want to, but it's easier in this stuff to dip whatever you're going to dip in it. Set it aside and let it dry. And here's what you're going to get. My first attempt was in my little test kiln, 110 volt kiln. It won't go very high, but I used uh, the recipe that I mentioned and I fired it to 1926. It didn't do anything. It looks like that splatter paint you buy. It is paint. I mean, it's, it's, it's glaze. It's on there. It's not going anywhere. But and just chip off in the corner some there. Right there, you can see where it's chipped off some. But I've been hauling this thing all over the place, showing it to people. Uh, I said, that didn't do. That's nice, but that didn't do. So I took it, and I put it in my electric kiln, and I fired it to cone 10. And here's what happened. It turned that color. And, of course, the, the red clay that I had already bisked to 04, now it turns a nice chocolate brown. You put the homemade ash glaze on it, it goes almost black. And I said, that's fine, but it's not what I'm looking for. It did shine up some, but it's not what I'm looking for. So, I took it a step further. I took it and I fired it to 06 instead of 010. Now at 010, it starts to warp a little. O10 is too high. You can do it if you want to. Play with it. But O6 is going to be, excuse me, I'm sorry. It's 10 and 6. Cone 6. Not O6. I'm sorry. This is fire to cone 6. And 10 is too hot. This little booger right here, it wanted to, uh, it wanted to melt. Its little head started to slide down. Turned that nice blackish color, but you, there's some warpage. It's not where you want it to go, unless that's where you want it to go. And the same with this little little thing right here. It, it, it same colors. All those were fired to cone 10. Now, this one, I fired to six. I adjusted the recipe a little bit, uh, but not enough to make any difference a lot, really. Uh, it stayed, the clay stayed red. You can't see it here because I scraped most of it off and it's still a little color. But it stayed red. And I like that. I like that. It's kind of got a greenish tinge to it. I'm told that different ashes will cause a different effect. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, you go from that to that to, well, actually, that, to a bisque piece, and then from bisque you go to that, if you use a glaze, or that, excuse me, that, I'm messing this up, or you can, you can pot fire them, or fire them in the ground, however you want to do it, and, uh, that's pretty much it. The only things you have to look out for is if you fire them when the stuff is still wet, the pot is still wet, give them a couple of days to dry out, it'll do funny things. Some people might like that, but I don't. That's because the glaze in the pot was still wet and the, the moisture was coming out. So pretty much that's, that's a real quick down and dirty on uh, from ashes to art. Uh, nothing was used here except natural river clay, 
well water, ashes from a burnt oak tree, and uh, that's it. That made the glaze, it made the pot, and I'm happy. I'm now trying to work with getting some different colors by burning some different types of wood. Uh, but this is what you can do with stuff just pretty much laying around. And in closing, if you don't have any, um, you know, wood to burn, or maybe you can't burn it, uh, try just burning up some charcoal briquettes. Next time you have a, char uh, a barbecue, save your briquette ashes. are nice and white. When they're all through burning, sift them. I bet that would work. So, anyway, it's Captain Mike. I'm Captain Mike. Uh, and uh, that's my video on Ashes to Art. I hope that it helped you and that uh, you'll give it a try. I'm out of here.